then we are very lucky today to be joined by three of the women who are leading the charge against educating the public around issues around heart disease, heart health. So I am very lucky to be joined by Dr. Allison Spatz. She's my doctor. Who is Rosie's doctor. New York Presbyterian Wild Cornell Medical Center, uh, Dr. Holly Anderson, who's the Director of Education and Outreach for the Donald Trump and Heart Institute, and also an attending cardiologist at New York Presbyterian Hospital, and uh, finally, British Robinson, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Women's Heart Alliance, a newly formed organization uh, dedicated to raising awareness of the uh, So, let me... Thank you very much, and there's a mic out in the audience that we will we will make available in just a few moments. But um, let me get let me get started by first of all once again thanking Rosie for telling your story. <laughs> 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 um, let me start though with with British, if I could. So you are now running this organization uh, that is really taking the lead on educating women about heart health and heart disease. Can you tell us a little bit about why now is the moment and how you're planning to really educate women about this? Uh, the numbers are just astonishing, um, this really uh, very powerful threat. Absolutely. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And thanks to Barnard and the Athena Film Festival and Sheila Evans for hosting us. Let me first say, uh, Rosie, thank you for that. And thanks for the gift of your life. The reason why we, that uh, Ronald Perlman, uh, the uh, businessman and philanthropist, and Barbara Streisand, your dear friend, uh, started the Women's Heart Alliance um, because of exactly what Rosie mentioned in, uh, just now in the film, um, because of the statistics, because this is an epidemic, because every minute, every 60 seconds, a woman in the United States dies of heart disease. It is preventable, and we can do something about it, and that's what the two doctors will talk to you about. Uh, the Women's Heart Alliance was created a major campaign, a nationwide campaign called Fight the Lady Killer. And please go to our website um, at fighttheladykiller.org to learn more about us. Um, but essentially, we are passionate and committed to, first and foremost, educating women that it is the number one killer in the United States. As Rosie said, it is not breast cancer. It's number one more than all cancers combined, even globally, not just in the United States. And second, we want to empower you to get heart checked, to know the signs, the symptoms, and to know your risks. Rosie said it so well. And we have, I think at the end of this, um, outside, we'll have some heart check cards so you can take those and empower, empower yourselves. The third piece is we also want to move Congress and our federal government agencies um, to dedicate and increase funding for women's heart disease, whether it be research, clinical trials, or even programs that are available in many communities in the United States, women don't even know about, they can actually get help and get assistance. So the time is now because too many women are dying. The time is now because of what happened to Rosie. We don't have another minute. That's why now. So, Rosie, you had some fabulous ideas in the film about what to do to spread the word. I particularly like the Broadway musical. Thank you so um, much. I. <laughs> and I am recently, I'm going to be available soon. I don't know if <laughs> Perfect timing for this. <laughs> we, we will be the closing of the old hatch. So. Yes. Well, I would, uh, yeah, it would thrill me to get to spread this message in any way. You know, after I had my heart attack, Cindy Berger was my close friend and publicist. Uh, she was crying, saying, you know, I'll kill you if you die. And I was like, well, why don't you get me and all the other women who've had heart attacks who are famous, and we'll all do a PSA. And she said, none of the women that she knows who are famous who've had heart attacks are willing to talk about it publicly. And that's what inspired me to call Sheila and say, we have to do something. And do, you, do you have any idea why that is so? I mean, we've become so public about breast cancer, about ovarian cancer. Why? You know, it's considered a man's disease. It doesn't have like the cachet of breast cancer has femininity and pink ribbons and, and prettiness and I don't know. But they've also had a great marketing campaign for the last few years. Everybody got behind it, but it, it felt very uh, disingenuous and kind of tragic to me that I spent six years on daily television telling people to get a mammogram when they were ten times as likely to die of heart disease. And there I was eating ding dogs, you know saying I didn't give a shit about it. And I, didn't, I wasn't even informed. So I think that that's, information is knowledge and power and 
women, we need to know what's killing us, and it's killing us more than anything else. Holly, Holly and, and Allison, you, you must see this. I mean, why do women not speak out more? What can, should well, women be doing? I think doing? it's something else, and I have seen all our careers, that women don't talk about their heart disease. And I take care of a world-recognizable movie actor, female, who didn't want to talk about her heart attack because it's no man's disease. And actually, the Women's Heart Alliance did our research and found out that only 27% of women can name another woman in their lives with heart disease. Only 11% can name another woman in their lives who has died from heart disease. And this is because women don't share their stories of heart disease. And one of the reasons is that they feel stigmatized by the disease. That they don't want to share their, they tell people they have heart disease because they feel that they might be judged as if they should have taken care of themselves uh, more, eaten better. And it's the youngest women who actually are the most likely to feel this way. And although death rates due to heart disease is decreasing across the board in this country, death rates due to heart disease is actually increasing in our youngest adults age 29 to 45 and increasing faster in young women. And Yolanda King, Martin Luther King's daughter, died on her 50th birthday when she just turned 50. Same exact thing, I had 100% blockage of her LED and she was dead before she hit the floor. So you all know at least one, Yolanda King. So you're making me nervous. <laughs> I'm glad. It's good. It's good. It's good. What, what should women be doing? Well, I think it's not our goal to make women nervous. I think it's, it's to educate women and, and for people to be aware of the symptoms. Because if you don't know or recognize the symptoms that you're having, then there's no reason for you to go to the doctor and get help. So you have to recognize that these symptoms can be very variable. And there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor, even if it's a false alarm, and saying, you know, I don't feel well. There's something to matter. And get tested. Demand to be tested. And it doesn't just affect older women. It affects 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds. And, I mean, we do see a lot of young women in our practice that have heart disease. So you just be knowledgeable, educated, spread the word so that people really know to get help, get screened, and then we can really make a difference. We do want to empower women. We want to empower them with knowledge. But one of the great things about being a cardiologist is that there's so much you can do to prevent heart disease. And prevention is crucial because all too often the first symptom could be sudden death. So, but anything that you do that's good for your heart is good for the rest of you. Okay, so it's, you want to give uh, us a little list? Yeah. Well, I would say physical activity is a fountain of youth, right? You are what you, you eat. You gotta move. You are what you eat. Get a good night's sleep. Release stress. Laugh. Go out with your friends. There's a you know there's an old adage that said the best thing a, woman, a guy can do for his health is to get married, and the best thing a woman can do is go out and have lunch with her friends. <laughs> all, of that, all of that matters. That lifestyle matters. Yes. Get your blood pressure checked. Yes, get your cholesterol levels checked. Yes, you know, make sure your sugar levels, are, if they're too high, get them treated. Yes, family history matters. But we have a whole new science in medicine right now called epigenetics, and that means the way you, the way you live, the way you, to how much you move, how you think, especially, can change the way your DNA gets translated. And it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to exercise every day. You don't have to run a marathon. You just have to walk. You need to walk. You could go to the gym 20 minutes a day, three days a week. It, you know, a recent study just came out that showed that actually just moderate exercise can really make a difference in cardiovascular health and living longer. So it doesn't take a lot. And let me ask one more question and then I will turn to the audience. Um, but given that we are here in the context of a film festival and at an academic institution, what, what paths might we take in the media? In, in, uh, in academic outreach. I mean, again, I love the Broadway musical, but if we don't quite get there, you know, should television shows be showing this more? Yeah, you know, you know, there was a PSA that, that I think the American Heart Association did, and, you know, it was a frazzled young mother, and the kids were asking for stuff for her, and then she laid it. It was nothing like my heart attack. But, you know, you can go on the Go Red website and all these, Ron Perlman, of course, different websites, and read individual women's um, video diaries where they'll explain exactly what happened to them. But I think it would be great to incorporate it in all of the, the dramas, the medical dramas when the people are coming into the ER. You never see women coming in for heart attacks. And, and, and oftentimes when they do, women are told, take a Xanax. And they're sent home. They're told they're having a panic attack when they're in fact having a heart attack. So I think education and, and incorporation into the mass media um, productions would really help. 
Questions from the audience? Yes, right, uh, gentleman in the first row? Have a mic come to you, hopefully. I can speak up. Yes, straight on. Oh, Rosie, how hard was it to be Sorry, funny? Mike is coming. How hard was it to be funny ab about something that was so life threatening? Well, you know, I use humor always, and as an Irish Catholic kid growing up in Long Island with a deceased mother, nobody really talked about their feelings, but if you could couch it in a joke, you were able to get what you felt across subtly. So uh, when I met with Sheila, she said, you think you could do stand-up about it? And I said, no. And she said, I bet you could. So uh, there we are. When Sheila says do it, I do it. And uh, I now have to bring every potential spouse to her for screening. She just made me promise that before today's event. <laughs> it's weird timing because all that shit's true. It's not even a lie. But I don't know. Don't ask me what's happened since then because I don't have an answer. And let me just say, I'm black and Catholic, and we do get pale. You get asked to get pale. I don't pale. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get the mail down. I know that. I carry cocoa butter with me just in case. Palmers. Works. So the H-E-P-P-P cuts across. Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you. I think we have a question right in the middle of the... I just wondered, in addition to being checked annually by a gynecologist and internist, when should a woman or should a woman... See a cardiologist regularly, or we are we are really trying to work with the uh, OBGYN doctors and even pediatricians and general internal medicine doctors because the, you know we also pulled in primary care doctors and found that only 39 percent of primary care doctors considered heart health to be a top health top tier health concern for their female patients. So you know we think the way we're really going to drive the numbers as much as we're going to do professional education as well, is, is to empower you as a patient to examine. And, and I encourage you to go to our, our website because it tells it in very simple terms. We have a card for you what, what the risk factors are. Examine your family history, your personal history. Talk to your OBGYN. If you have high blood pressure during your pregnancy or diabetes, you're at a much higher future risk of stroke and heart attack. If you have migraine headaches with aura, if you have an autoimmune dis a disease such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, these are things that primarily affect menopause, early menopause, less than 45, okay, these increase your risk of stroke and heart attack. And you don't have to go to a cardiologist, you have to go to a doctor that's listening to you. This is not complicated stuff. <clears throat> Examine your risk and figure out, and make sure you're not having symptoms now, and learn how to lower your risk for heart disease. And I'll just, uh, just want to throw out, we'll get a microphone for the person right over here, and I just want to throw out something we were discussing before the film. Um, Holly and, and Allison are really in the minority. There's very few female cardiologists. Mm -hmm. So even though women are, you know, over 50% med school students, by the time they hit the cardiology stage, most of the women have gone another path. So that's probably part of this puzzle as well. The best ones become cardiologists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Uh, how is this film being distributed, and have there been any unexpected responses to it from either doctors, it's women? It's HBO. Or... It's on HBO on Valentine's Day, and then it'll be on HBO's To Go uh, platform, so you can watch it wherever you are. And uh, that's kind of the best distribution for documentaries ever that you could get uh, under the tutelage of Sheila Evans, <laughs> Academy Award winner multiple times. <laughs> 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 So that's where, and all the doctors, we, we put it through a bunch of different doctors, all my doctors, to check that everything I said was accurate, because, you know, sometimes, like Brian Williams, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, you know, you, I, you know, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I was in a helicopter that got hit by an RPG. I forgot I wasn't in it. <laughs> of their own. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was just in it. Shit, I forgot. <laughs> what is that? Remember when Walter Cronkite was the most trusted man in the world? He took off his glasses. He said, this war is war off. And the Vietnam War ended a few months later. And now we've got Brian and Williams saying, Thank <laughs> you.